Hello, everyone. Welcome back to our channel today. We're talking about an exciting what if scenario that has the potential to change the way we see and connect the Bicol region. What if there were a bridge connecting Camarines Sur and Catanduanes? Let's dive into what such a bridge could mean, the potential benefits and the challenges that come with building it. Why connect Camarines Sur and Catanduanes? Catanduanes, often called the land of the howling winds, is a province known for its lush landscapes, rich fishing grounds, and proximity to the Pacific. But it is also remote, separated from mainland Luzon by a stretch of the Philippine Sea. While it's just 30, 40 kilometers away from Camarines Sur, reaching Catanduanes involves taking ferries that can be delayed or even canceled during typhoons. A significant problem for a province that sees an average of 20 typhoons a year. Connecting Catanduanes to Camarines. Sur by bridge would mean more than just shortening travel time. It would be a lifeline that allows for the constant flow of goods, access to services, and safe passage even during rough weather. The vision, how a bridge could transform Catanduanes and Bicol. A bridge would open up numerous economic and social benefits. Trade and tourism. With easier access, Catanduanes could see a boost in tourism. Mainland travelers could visit attractions like Pururan Beach and Binurong Point with ease spurring growth in local businesses and hospitality. Similarly, exports like fish, abaca, and handicrafts could be transported more reliably and in greater volume, boosting income for Catanduanes farmers and artisans. Disaster response and safety. Catanduans is in a prime typhoon path. When typhoons hit, the island often becomes isolated, complicating emergency response and supply transport. A bridge would ensure that during crises, relief goods, medical teams, and essential resources could reach the province quickly and without relying on ferries. Everyday convenience. For Catan Dunganans, a bridge would simplify everyday life. Currently, essentials like food, building materials, and machinery are transported by boat, increasing costs. With a bridge, travel would be faster and more affordable, reducing expenses for locals, possible route, and feasibility. The closest feasible connection would likely be from Caramoan Peninsula in Camarines Sur to the northwestern shore of Catanduanes. The route, approximately 30-35 kilometers, would need to span open sea, requiring advanced engineering to withstand waves, currents, and typhoons. Given the distance and environmental conditions, the project would likely involve a series of pylons and suspension spans, perhaps similar in scale to bridges seen internationally over similar coastal distances. Engineering challenges aside, this ambitious undertaking would require a significant budget and long-term commitment, economic landscape, and political influence. The economic impact could be transformative, but the proposal also faces complex political and business dynamics. Currently, ferry services are the primary transportation option, and this industry is a significant economic player in Catanduanes controlled by key political figures who may not favor a bridge that could impact their business interests. The governor of Catanduanes, for instance, has substantial investments in shipping. A bridge could reduce demand for ferry services, potentially affecting the profitability of established businesses. With political figures holding financial stakes in these industries, garnering local support for the bridge may face hurdles, as those who benefit from the current system might resist the change. Funding, feasibility studies, and government willpower. Funding a bridge of this scale would require substantial government investment, likely supported by partnerships or foreign loans. Feasibility studies, environmental impact assessments, and public consultations would all play a vital role in determining whether this project is practical. The project would need clear and unwavering support from both the national and local governments as well as advocacy from community leaders who understand the long-term benefits over short-term economic interests. It would also require substantial initial outlay and a commitment to rigorous maintenance to ensure the bridge's longevity against natural forces. The bigger picture, economic and disaster resilience? Beyond convenience, a bridge could be a critical investment in disaster resilience. Typhoons and floods often isolate Catanduanes, creating urgent needs for food, fuel, and medical supplies. With a bridge, Catanduanes would remain accessible year-round, strengthening its economic stability and disaster preparedness. Imagine a scenario where emergency teams can reach Catanduanes directly by land, or where goods can move freely even during a storm warning. 
This would drastically reduce Catanduanes' vulnerability, making it a model for resilient island communities in the Philippines. Moving forward, challenges and opportunities. Building a bridge from Camarines Sur to Catanduanes is a vision of resilience, connectivity, and economic growth. However, it is not without challenges. Environmental concerns, the substantial investment needed, and political interests stand as obstacles. Yet the potential benefits are vast. A connected Bicol, a resilient Catanduanes, and a model for infrastructure that values people's safety and well-being. If successful, this bridge could become more than just a physical link. It could be a symbol of progress and disaster resilience in the Philippines, showing what is possible when communities and leaders unite for the common good. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this discussion, give us a like, share your thoughts in the comments, and subscribe for more topics exploring Philippine infrastructure and development. Let's keep the conversation going on how we can build a stronger, more resilient future for our nation. If this video sparked your interest, give it a thumbs up, comment with your thoughts, and hit that subscribe button for more deep dives into Philippine infrastructure and development possibilities.